So far we learned in this course how to write a function and pass parameters to those functions and use those values in our functions. And we also learned how to handle big data using a speci special functions such as map and reduce. So if you have a collection of the data, how do you handle it in functional program? We will learn it today. Functions and data. Basically, when you use functional programming, Obviously, we can use basic data types, OS. We could use a collection of the data, or, or what you call it as data structures. So when you want to build data structures and pass those data structures to the functions, we can use the concept of classes. So we can put all the data together as class and then we use object of those classes and pass those classes into the functions and manipulate those data inside the functions. So here we use class on the angle of encapsulating the data. We are not looking at object-oriented programming styles here. Instead, we will study classes as a method to encapsulate data. In order to understand how to do that, we will take an example. Assume we want to define a package where it handle rational numbers. Rational numbers has two parts you know, numerator and denominator. Numerator is a one, x for example here, and denominator is the y. Using that numerator and denominator, we represent a rational number. Assume we, we use basic data types to do that. So then we write a function to pass this data. We have to write a function parameter, something like that. For example, let's say we want to write a function to add two rational numbers. For that, each rational number has a numerator and denominator. So if you want to pass two of them into a function, we need to pass four parameters. So if you want like, to pass uh, three rational numbers to a whatever function, so we might need six parameters. That is kind of confusing, difficult, and not practical. If you have a mechanism to build a data structure, which has these basic data types as its elements, that would be a nice feature in a functional program. So we will learn today by taking an example of this rational number and some other examples, how to, how to use class as a data encapsulation, method, uh, class as a data encapsulation mechanism. So now, in our example, so we want to create a class or rational number to put the numerator and denominator together and build new data type. Assume we want to create a new data type called rational number. It has numerator and denominator. So how do you use do that using class? So in this car life, we want to build such class. So we create a keyword class and we give a name for that, that is rational, and pass 
two parameters that is x to numerator and y to denominator. So then we can define two functions inside that for numerator function and denominator function. There are no nothing, no operations there instead. We just assign whatever we pass to numerator and whatever we pass y to the denominator. So they are numerator and denominator is a function inside the rational. So, so that is called as rational class. So by creating such new data type called rational, we can use it to create such uh, values and variables of rational type. So when you create a class in Scala, it automatically have a construct. So for example, when you pass X and Y, so whatever the parameter values is in the function, so they will be executed automatically as the initialization. So, so when you create a rational number, something like that, rational, and pass one and two as numerator and denominator, it automatically execute numerator and denominator function in this rational class and assign this one and two to the x and y in this function. Or otherwise, this function return x and other one returns. Denominator function will execute with x and then numerator function return one, denominator function return two. So when you call the rational class with the keyword new, it creates a new object of this type. And similarly, it creates a new value or variable to use in our programs. For example, I can create a rational number value for x with the, our new data type rational with the keyword new by passing these numerator and denominator values. So then it returns a rational number, x is our rational number. If you want to get the numerator part of it, so we use a dot operator. So we put the value identifier that is x dot and then numerator, it returns the numerator value of this rational number. So when you put dot x dot denominator, it returns the denominator part of this particular rational number x. Right. So rational arithmetic has different definitions. So, so this first function shows how to add two rational numbers. Second shows subtraction. This is dot operation, multiplication, and this division. And this is how to check the equality of two rational numbers. Assume now we want to write functions to implement those uh, arithmetic operations of those rational numbers. That is, plus, subtractions, multiplication, divisions, greater than, less than, equality, and so on. How do you do that? If you incorporate functions with the data abstraction, those functions usually be called as methods. Methods applies to the data abstracts in the particular class. So methods are kind of functions. Different between uh, pure functions and whatever the other functions we discussed so far, and the method is such, such that pure functions basically take inputs from outside, execute them, and return the output. The methods are the functions applies to the data, maybe defined inside this class plus or to the data which comes from the outside. So that means one can go 
further and also package functions operating on the data abstraction in the data classes itself. So if we do so, such functions are called as methods. So we can abstract the data by packaging the data into the class. So we can package functions also to the same class to manipulate the data. So such functions, we call it as methods. So for example, our numerator data structure, we can define it functions or methods, what we call it as methods, add, subtraction, multiplication, uh, division, equality, two strings, and so on. Let's assume we want to uh, define the add method to the rational number class. How do you do so? So our rational number class take two x and y's and we define numerator and denominator functions. So it's construct of this rational number. And in addition to that, we define add number method. We take a rational number or R. It's not this, this number, same type of a number as the input parameter. So if you want to add this rational number R to the rational number defined in this particular object. So we do like that. So this is the definition of addition. The rational. We multiply numerator of the first number with the denominator of the second number, and then to a multiplication of numerator and the denominator. This is basically new numerator of the class. And then we divide it to the denominator of this number into the denominator which takes by the other number. So that's basically definition. So we do that and return or create a new rational number. So add functions take rational number add that to the existing number and return a new rational number. So that's how we define that. Similarly, we can define multiplication, subtraction, and so on. So in addition to that, we can define a function called two string. So you know, we are having to use a method called print, println, to see the data. So print and println access a method called toString. So if you have any class which define the toString method, so println method basically call this toString and whatever returns print on the term. So toString methods of a typical class we can overwrite based on our class. So for example, so rational class override the existing two, two string methods and see how to print the rational number. So we say denominator, division mark, and the denominator. So that's how we want to print the rational number. So we write a method called two string. So when someone calls two string, it returns this string. And that string, when passed to the print end, we print on the term. So if you have two string method defined, so we can call print, print a length and rational number directly. It prints the rational number in this form. Okay. So if you define rational number, methods for the functions, what you call multiplications, divisions, addition, and so on. So we could operate them between each other. So for example, here we have a value for x, one of the rational number is one, three. Then there is a value y, rational value y, rational value is it. 
if we want to add rational x to the rational y, so we can call our add method. We say x dot add method rational y. It return the other rational number, maybe call a. So then we can multiply this rational number a with our multiplication function and z. So that rational number a will multiply with the z. Obviously, we need to implement multiplication function or what you call as multiplication method in rational class. So if you implement those, we could go one after other, something like that. So as the exercise, how do you define negative method or the neck method of rational number? So when you call neck method on on top of rational number x, we need to get a new rational number that is minus x. How do you do that? So think about if you create such minus x or the x negative method, how do you use that and implement subtraction method? X dot sub it should subtract two rational numbers. So maybe you can use this neck and addition to do this sub. So if you define such methods, try to get values x minus y minus z by defining these three rational numbers x, y, z. As an exercise, you can do. You, you can do that. So I will show you how to do it. Negative. So then in a simple way, we can do this. Define a method called, or the function called negative. It's a new rational number which takes minus numerator of this number and this number's denominator. So it's created a new rational with negative value. Similarly, we can create a rational number addition. So we can use a word add, or instance, we can use plus sign, plus operator. Plus is an addition operator. So we can overwrite that in our function and create add method of this rational number if you wish. So here I define the rational number plus method, which take rational number R and create a new rational number, which multiply the numerator of this number in with denominator of the given number plus numerator of the given number multiply with the denominator of this number. As you may understood, this refers to the present object, this object. So when you define such class method, you can apply that class function to rational number directly like that. So if you have such class method and negative method defined, subtraction method or well, the function can implement simply like that. So we define the subtraction, so minus operator, by taking rational r, that is actually this present rational number plus the negative of the given number. So we already define the negative function here, so we can apply r rational to the negative it returns the negative of the rational number r. We add to the this number with an add function that is basically subtraction. You see how nice we can organize those each other using the concepts of function and program. So by taking this hint, you can do this exercise I post to the LMS. So Right. So
so when you deal with the rational numbers so we always would like to show the simplest form of the rational number so for example if there is a rational number for two as a denominator four as a numerator two oh, sorry uh, two divide four right so it can further simplify as one over two two or four and simplifies to one over two so in other words when you represent rational numbers we would always like to represent or store those rational numbers in their simplest form so if you could do it within the class that would be nice so in the operators or the app, people who are using this class may not see or may not need to do the simplification so in the data abstraction level we can handle that can you improve our rational data structure of the class to do that if you want to do that we need to get a support from the functions which we implemented previously that is our greatest common divisor function gcd greatest common divisor or the gcd function returns the the largest common factor of two given numbers so if you take the largest factor common to the numerator and denominator and di divide the numerator denominator with that largest factor so you can simplify a rational number into the simplest form so so this is the way we can do that so inside the rational class we can define function called greatest common device that function should not need to open to the outside because outside does not need that so it required only inside of this other function so because of that we call this gcd function as a private function so we create a private function inside this rational class as gcd which takes two inputs and if p is equal to zero gcd of a and b is a else gcd of a and b is gcd of b and a module b that is euclidean algorithm or oh, this is the recursive implementation of gcd it has recursion so remember our example previous examples so we create our tail recursive function of gcd as a private function inside this rational class and then we apply x and y and calculate the gcd that is g then we define numerator and denominator functions as x dy g and y dy g so when you pass then any x and y with these two functions it is further simplifies into a simpler form because numerator will divide by the whole factor and denominator also divide by the same number of the same factor so it simply simplify the x and y equal to this rational class so when you create rational number passing x and y those things defined here will automatically executes so that is whatever the input x and y if there is a function with x and y that will be executed at the initialization so it's a constructor is kind of automatic in this definition of those classes so without assigning the gcd value to another value g we can do simply like that if you wish so we take rational number x and y rational class we define we create a definition of greatest common device and we call the, we we define the numerator function as x 
dy dc d of x y and the denominator function has y dy dc d of x y so then if someone create rational number with 2 and 4 it create a simplest form that is 1 and 2 1 over 2 automatically so if you do like that so every time we are initializing the rational numbers those classes will be called so it's good if we are kind of not oftenly calling this x and y if you are called that rational function more often every time if you want to execute a function it kind of inefficient so what instead of functions so perhaps we can use values in the class if you wish so in previously you see i created numerator and denominator as functions so same thing we could do it with values so here we create a data structure rational not with two functions now with value called numerator and denominator at the initialization stage we create numerator value x as x dy dc dx y denominator value y y dy dc dx y is equal to the denominator so we could do like that as well as i mentioned if you want to refer to the same data structure we use the key keyword called this this always refers to the same object or the same data structure so for example let's assume we want to create a method called less so take the rational number that so less method is numerator of this rational multiply that denominator is less than that numerator into this denominator this is basically less so if you just pass numerator and denominator here it may not be very clear so instead we could define our less function something like that it is much more readable so there is a less function in the rational class now it takes this numerator multiply into that denominator and check whether it is less than that numerator multiply into this denominator if you create assume you create a less function like that so how do you then create mass function this returns the, the larger way of the rational. So if you want to have this max function using the less, so we could go like that. So we have max function which returns the maximum value of two given rational numbers. This number or the number which passes to the max method, that is that number. So we could go like that. If this dot less that, then that is the maximum, as this is the maximum. So you see, using self-preference this, if you implement a function like this, less or max, it's more readable. So it would be a good practice always use to this keyword if you are referring to the data belongs to the same class or if you are referring to a function belongs to the same class so this does mean these functions or the methods defined in the same class so you have to learn or you have to always it's a good practice always to use this keyword when you are referring to the data in the same class or the same data structure 
Similarly, when creating data structures, we can introduce preconditions or requirements. <coughs> so, for example, in the rational number, if the de denominator is minus or zero, we cannot, these numbers are not exist. So the preconditions of the rational number should be denominator should a positive number. So you can check that at the time of creating a class. So in order to do that, Scala has a keyword called require, which take two parameters. So you can pass a condition or Boolean expression as the first parameter and then you can pass a method, um, error message, as the second parameter. That is optional. Second parameter is optional one. So you can have required with single parameter as well. So then what happens when someone use creating a rational number, the require automatically check whether y greater than or greater than zero. If that is not satisfied, that data structure is not created, will not be created. So like that, we can introduce checks or possible assertions at the beginning of this data creations. Similar to the requirements, actually there is a keyword for asset available. You can introduce asset as well, like asset greater than or equal zero, and it can you can put an error message as well. Asset create assertion in a require create illegal argument exception. A session applies after executing these functions and on top of the result of the requirement basically applies to the parameters passes to the function class. So in our example, so it's better to use required. As I mentioned in Scala, Constructor definition is implicit. Scala classes implicitly introduce a constructor. This is usually called as a primary constructor of the class. Primary constructor take the parameter of the class and execute all statements in the class body using this parameter at initialization. So we can define auxiliary constructors if you wish, in addition to the primary constructor. So let's see how to do auxiliary constructors. As you know, real numbers are a subset of rational numbers where denominator is equal to one. So if you want to pass, or if you want to create rational number without passing a denominator, something like that, rational two. So then our rational class should create a number two or one, something like that. So always denominator is one if there are no denominator passes to this rational method, constructor method. So how can that be done? So this is called as axillary constructor because default constructor take two parameters, but here axillary constructor only take one parameter. How can you create such axillary constructors in our rational class? The way to create is this. So we create a definition or new function for this, which take a single parameter and say that is equal to the our original constructor. 
So there we have to use two parameters. First one is the x v passes, and second one we fix to one. Second parameter we fix to one. In other words, when you create then a rational number with a single parameter, the second parameter is automatically fixed to one. So that's how we could create it auxiliary constructors in the data structures. Right. Okay, in order to understand how to use classes or the data structures in functions, Let's try to solve another problem, real life problem. As if we want to implement a bank, bank application, usually banks consist of bank accounts or the accounts. Accounts is a collection of national IDs, account holder names, account number, and maybe the balance of the account. So that usually accounts. Accounts may have four parameters actually i put three for simplicity that is nic account number and the balance so in addition to that we can have another field called account holder name that is accounts so if you create an account then we can define the bank as list of accounts because bank is a collection of accounts so in order to have a bank or in order to solve the bank as a function so we can define the bank as a list of accounts and then we can create a account class for the account data structures to hold the account information how can you do that so here is the simple version of doing it so i create a bank here that is a list of accounts initially this list is empty so as you see here, I'm creating a class called account now, check ID and account number, and maybe the balance at the beginning. So I did assign this ID to the field called NIC, value called NIC, and account number to the value called account number, and the balance to the value called balance. So in the account class, I then write a two string method and print account number, NIC, account number and balance of the term. So in this class, perhaps I want to have some functions or what you call it as methods to do withdraw, deposit and transfer money. So withdrawing some amounts from the account, let's say I want to withdraw amount A from the given account, this account. So this is equal to this third balance minus A. If that account balance minus A will assign back to the balance. So after the withdraw, that is our withdraw. So then similarly we can define our deposit function. Deposit means we're adding some money into our account. So then balance will be increased. So so we add this balance to the A, the deposit amount, and assign back to the balance. So that is our deposit function. Like that, we can define various functions to the account data structure. So that functions are called as methods of this particular class account. So I have defined withdraw and deposit. Perhaps you can create define a class called transfer, which take a account number and the amount which go to transfer. So this transfer method should transfer amount B from the this account and put it to the account A. Think about way to implement it. I will ask you to do it as an exercise and post it to the LMS soon. 
right so if you have such bank function implemented uh, account function like account class implemented we can implement different bank functions by using these accounts so as i said bank is a variable which has list of accounts so after create an account we can add that account to this list so then eventually there is a variable called bank it has the list of accounts in this particular bank so in order to do some operations let's assume we want to find the bank account so there we can implement a function called find so here i create an anonymous function called find for the lambda function called find which take a string that is nic and the list of the banks as the parameter to the find function then it returns or it transfer that parameters into this that is b dot filter so i use a filter method which we learned in the last class filter so which equals nic equals to the string we passes so filter method will go through the list and return the all accounts which has this nic so that's our find function similarly assume we want to return or get a list of accounts which has negative balances so for that here i implement a method called overdraft which takes the list of bank accounts as inputs and transform to the list of negative accounts that means when someone call overdraft with the bank account list it should return a new list which has negative balances accounts with negative balances then can you code this filter what should we pass in think of it similarly as if we want to find the total balance in the bank sum of all balances in all accounts so we have a list of bank accounts which has different negative positive balances so what i want to do with it, the balance function to get addition of all balance values in the accounts how can i do that i can use simple reduce method to do it so i use a balance function take a count list as a parameter transform to the b dot radius so what should i write here think about it. so single radius code will return me the sum of all balances simple filter code will return me the accounts with negative balances As if I want to end up the month or end of the day, I want to calculate interest, interest to the balances available in each account. So there are two types of balances may have. So some may be have negative balance where the people has given loans, and some may have positive balances where the people have deposited some monies. Assume that. So assume some banks would like to pay. 0.05 interest to the positive balances and banks would like to take 0.1 interest on negative balances can you implement a function for interest will calculate those interest values and adjust the balance according to it at the end of the day so at the, at the end of the day as you so we call interest function with list of the banks that transform to the new list with new balances so can you do that with single quote so obviously as a hint i can say you can use a call map to do that so how would this map function look like so single map function to do all the calculation of interest using one simple code 
how would it look like? Think about it. So you see, so we can create a account data structure and then define the bank as list of accounts and then implement the different operations of bank using filter, reduce, map, and so on. So that's how we use functional programming styles to solve our real life problems. We could use functional styles to solve any problems. So you see, we need to, if you want to do so, we have to think differently, with different style or different thinking pattern. Let's call it as, we have to think it as functional way. So we use class here in functional programming as data structure. So we use class to abstract data or we to use class to add or kind of group data together with some functions which applies to the data. So in the functional programming object or the object is a value which consists of some fields and the functions. The class creates such objects. Right, using class, we can have collect or we can incorporate or we can abstract some data fields with some functions. So then applications can call them to solve their problems. So with that, I can conclude the lecture of this section. Later on, I will create a separate video for the demonstration and upload to the LMS. Meantime, I will upload the exercise which I mentioned throughout this lecture to the LMS where you have to do this. Thank you for listening so far.